Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on solving quadratics. So we've done quite a bit with quadratics so far. We've done graphing, evaluating, labeling. The final part of this is solving. Now, to solve means to look for a particular solution. Just keep that in mind, a point on the parabola that has some type of significance. So in this first lesson, we're just going to do a quick introduction of what it means to solve a quadratic and specifically what solution or solutions are we looking for. So grab some notes and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is a quick review on the parts of a parabola. So when you're given a quadratic function like the one I gave you right here, the solutions form what's called a parabola or this U shape. And this happens in quadratic functions because when you square a number, it's going to produce two outputs. When I square negative one and one, they both give me an output of one. When I square negative five and five, they both give me an output of 25, causing these points to essentially reflect on both sides of the parabola. So the most important point on a parabola is the parabola's vertex. The vertex is the only point that is unique because it's the only input that produces one unique output. In other words, it's not reflected. Going along with the vertex is the parabola's axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the invisible line that crosses directly through the vertex and cuts the parabola in half. Finally, and most importantly, are the parabola's zeros. The zeros are the x-intercepts or the points on the parabola where the output of the function is zero. We can see this here in our table. This parabola, this function has two zeros. Notice again that on the graph and in the table, these are two points where the output y has a value of zero. So let's think about our original question at the beginning here. What does it mean to solve a quadratic? What special solutions are we looking for? These two right here. To solve a quadratic means to find its zeros. So if I handed you this quadratic and I told you to solve it, that means tell me the zeros of this function. Give me the input x that produces an output y of zero. Now before we can actually start solving some quadratic functions and finding the zeros, let's do a quick review on the types of zeros that you can have. So it's most common when you're graphing a quadratic that your function is going to have two zeros, meaning that the parabola is going to cross the x-axis in two locations. The parabola on the left has two zeros and the parabola on the right has two zeros. The second scenario when you have a parabola and a quadratic function is that your parabola only crosses the x-axis in one unique spot. That would mean that these parabolas have one zero, only one x-intercept. Now this only occurs when the vertex and the zero are the same point. The third and final scenario is when the parabola does not cross the x-axis. In both of these cases, you don't see any point that the parabola shares with the x-axis. There are no x-intercepts in either parabola. So we would say that these parabolas have no zeros. So how do we actually do this? How do we actually solve a quadratic? Well, hopefully some of you are thinking, couldn't we just graph it? And the answer is yes. You can always graph a quadratic and look at the parabola and try to find its zeros. However, Sometimes that's not always accurate, as is the case with this example here. I have a quadratic function, again in vertex form, and I have a table of values and the graph. Well, what's the issue here? The issue here is that I don't see the zeros in the table, the, the values jump from negative two to negative one to positive two, and in the graph, I can see that this quadratic function does have two zeros, but where are they? Even when I zoom in, it looks like it's kind of between two and three, kind of between five and six, but what are those values specifically? I have no idea. So unless we had access to a graphing calculator, we wouldn't be able to accurately find the zeros of this function. So since this can't be solved by graphing, we need other tools in our toolbox. We can't always just be expected to graph parabolas. That's where solving quadratics comes in. The goal of this unit is to develop some new tools 
that allow us to solve quadratics, aka find the zeros, in all three forms, standard form, vertex form, and intercept form. There are different tools that we can use depending on the form that we're given. For standard form, there are a lot of tools that we're going to go over. We're going to learn how to use what's called the quadratic formula. We'll also learn how to complete the square. And we're going to learn how to do some factoring with something called the zero product property. In vertex form, we're going to learn how to use what's called the square root property of equality. And in intercept form, we are going to use something called the zero product property. So these are all tools that allow us to find those zeros, to solve quadratics without going through the painstaking process of graphing, which I don't think any of us really want to go back to. But for now, that's it for today's lesson. I will see you next time.